microdose, yeah, microdose. Hosted by Kush Hayes and Robin Seto. Talking to talk, cause they got things for you to know. Let's go party with Miss Robin in the games on cameo, yeah. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What gets this next? Go and take a guess. No matter who it is, every episode's the best. Every episode's the best. Every episode's the best. If you disagree, you're crazy simple as chess. Micro dose, 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 yeah, micro dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here coming to you with another edition of the micro dose. With me, as usual, is Robin Seto. Miss Robin, if you're nasty, how you doing tonight, kid? Happy birthday, FYI. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm enjoying my birthday. Mm. What else? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> I'm, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we got some feedback on that one. <laughs> I got a little too excited. Um, yeah, right. I'm excited to be this old, uh, to get older. I'm sure it's the it's the ninth anniversary of your twenty first birthday. Congratulations, <laughs> Robin. Said we're on a streak. We got another guest tonight. She. It's normally we normally never start out with that. She mm. is an award winning producer. She is a martial artist. She's in film, so she's a stunt coordinator. She's the CEO of Iron Dragon TV. She also does some work for charity, including Partners Against Child Trafficking. They got an event April twenty third at the Austin School of Performing and Visual Arts. Please welcome Janelle Smith. How you doing, Janelle? What's good? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me today. I'm, I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> We're excited to have you. This is a, this is a treat. I, I love martial arts movies. I love, I love the world of stunts. I don't know as much as I should know, dependent, d- despite how many uh, action movies I have seen. We're going to talk about some Iron Dragon tonight. We're going to talk about a film fest happening in August. I, I believe it's called Action Fest. We're going to talk a little bit about a movie called Nova. But let's let's start off with the the closest thing. There's a self defense workshop on the 23rd in uh, Austin, Texas. Can what can you tell us about that? Yes. So actually, that one is going to be at UT Austin. So I teach at the University of Texas uh, uh-huh. in Austin. I teach uh, one of the sororities called the Texas Sunshines. Hmm. And isn't that a cool name? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very cheery. The Texas- Texas Sunshine. So I teach that group. And, um, you know, all of these workshops I do to raise awareness for human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Um, A few years ago, I produced a short film called Slaves. Mm -hmm. And as a producer, you know, I had to find out, okay, human trafficking, I know nothing about. Mm -hmm. So I did some research. And realize that um, this is an epidemic, you know, yeah. people don't know about this and it's happening right under our noses. So I dove in just, you know, anything that I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. And I thought, what can, what can I do? I, I need to do something. So started teaching self-defense and um, yeah, I've been doing that for five years for them. Okay. How, now, how so, long have you, have you been doing martial arts? When did you first start? What, what drew you into the world of of the dojo. <laughs> I like that. Um, I've always loved martial arts, you mm-hmm. know, like you, I, I'm a huge action movie fan and um, I've been in fitness for a long time mm-hmm. and I was teaching kickboxing and I said, you know, I want to teach my students how to kick properly. And I've always wanted to, you know, try martial arts. So I just walked into a dojo I told the master, I'm here, you know, I'm in fitness. Um, Please teach me how to kick. And I never stopped. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That was 20, probably 25 years ago, something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. This this wasn't something that started in like elementary school. Like you weren't dealing with a bully or daddy wasn't encouraging because like Texas boys are trouble. Uh, Right. No, yeah, like no, <laughs> no, actually, my dad was a huge fan of combat sports as well. So mm-hmm. being a daddy's girl, I was always with him whenever he went to boxing matches or any kind of combat sport. I was there. Very cool. So I, I've always loved it and mm-hmm. felt comfortable around it. Mm-hmm. So I think it was very natural for me when I started training. I started competing pretty, 
quickly Mm -hmm. and uh, just dove right in. But yeah, I was already, you know, in my 20s. So I was older. And Mm -hmm. um, but I like to say that I made up for time because I would train four to six hours a day. Mm -hmm. Um, I would train at the gym and then I would go to the dojo in the evenings and train another three hours. Now, all that training led to a couple of uh, city, state, and national champions, if I'm correct? Yeah, yeah. So I have two Texas uh, titles and regional and then national. Yes. That's so in Taekwondo. Cool. All right. So uh, I'm getting some of my information off of Wikipedia, some of my information off of IMDb. I take everything with a grain of salt. I, I have yep. a note here saying that you would have made the U.S. Olympic team, but there was an age restriction. Can you go elaborate yeah. on that if you don't mind? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, you have to be under, I think it was 35 at the time. So I was right at that age limit. And I'm Mm. like, Oh, it was that was that hurt. (laughs) How how, how much past the the the, the limit were you like, are we talking Um, weeks, months, a year? Yeah, probably. Yeah, months, something like that. Um, Yeah, yeah. But But that's okay. Yeah. Because I now, you know, I'm able to use what I love in film. So it just transition, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. So mm-hmm. it's everything happens for a reason. For sure. For sure. What's what's the mentality about that behind the governing body? Like there's no you being 36 in a month doesn't give the opponents any extra advantage or, or even a disadvantage. You know, like it's it's yeah, should, should yeah. be the best best in the bunch. Right. Right. Right, exactly. But, you know, when you're talking about, um, you know, the Olympic Committee, everything, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to have rules and regulations. And I totally understand that there has to be a cutoff point, you know, even if you're that close. So I don't know. I I think if Usain Bolt is 87 is like, I'm going to teach these whippersnappers a thing or two. Like, I think we should let him try, you know, know, maybe I'm I'm thinking too hard about it. Maybe. I'm with you. I agree. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's, that's heartbreaking. Girl bullies. Is that a thing? Do you, do you have anybody that comes to you seeking help about that? Um, you know, in, in today's world, unfortunately, you know, I, I do teach a lot of self-defense mm-hmm. to young women um, because um, you know, it's just the world we live in. And like we talked about a while ago, human trafficking People, unfortunately, it's always women, children, and the elderly. You know, it's always the weaker, okay. the weaker that, uh, you know, they're after. So I, um, you know, I try to make it a point to always teach classes to, uh, you know, handicapped uh, women, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you name it across the board. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just there to help. And if it empowers someone, you know, that's my goal. I want to make sure people feel safe. And if they need to defend themselves, they know how, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you know, it's the, the positive side, you know, is I get to see people transform, you know, mm-hmm. when I teach martial arts, I see them change and become more confident. And it, it, it's, it's truly something trans, you know, it transforms people as opposed to just being a coach or a, um, a trainer at a gym. Mm-hmm. I mean, that changes lives because they change bodies. But I, I think in martial arts, because the philosophy side of it, mm-hmm. it changes people from the inside. So it's, it's always good to mm-hmm. see that. With, uh, with your father taking you to all the events that you did, boxing and pro wrestling, are you a Von mm-hmm. Erichs woman or a Guerrero lady? <laughs> Von Erichs. <laughs> You, you, you have to be right. It's like a state law. Everyone has to celebrate the Von Erics and ha- take That's... a half day on someone's birthday, right? <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time, but yeah, you're right. You're right. You have to be for the Von Erics. <laughs> I love it. Uh, did, did you guys ever get across the border to a Lucha Libre show or did those, or are those prominent in Texas? They, they make their way up to San Francisco, but I, I don't uh-huh. know about wherever, everywhere else. Oh yeah. In Texas. Absolutely. It'd be weird uh, if it wasn't right. Oh, yeah. You know, my dad would try to get to all of those. Uh, You know, he loved them. In fact, there was one I remember meeting Andre the Giant. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that character. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, he was in one of my favorite films, uh, The Princess Bride, right? Everyone loves it. I dare someone I dare someone to hate that movie. I 
no, no one can, you know, everyone loves that movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so I was able to meet him in person when I was a little girl at a cool. wrestling match. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. When did you yeah. transition over to stunts? Well, when I started training, so I was in Taekwondo for several years, and then I transitioned to the style that I teach and train in now called Tukong. When I met my master there, Grandmaster Yi, he mm-hmm. worked on the film Sin City. Okay. Um, that was here in Austin with Robert Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. So that opened the door for us to do more um, training of actors and actresses for film in Austin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I saw that, process that I really, it intrigued me. I thought, okay, this is cool. You know, I love martial arts and I love training and to be able to meet these actors and producers, you know, coming in wanting to learn as well. So that, that basically opened the door. I I have to admit if, if my teacher had not kind of pushed me in that direction, I probably would not be doing what I'm doing. As mentioned earlier, we got a, a film festival coming up action fest. Action Fest 2021, it, it, do we have anything set yet? Do we, do, is it going to be in a theater or are we going to do it all online exclusively? Do we have anything uh, that we can announce yet? Yeah, I, we're going to stick with virtual one more year okay. uh, because theaters are slowly opening, but you know, we're not, we're not there yet. So I got it. we figured one more year virtual and then next year we'll plan for a, our big one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you do that at a local mom and pop or do you have like a Cinemark on standby or an Alamo yeah. draft house even? Yeah. Yeah. We've used, um, you know, the Austin film society we've used their theater. Um, we've used galaxy. So every year, you know, we try to use one of the local theaters and um, hopefully next year we can be at the Alamo. That would be great. That'd be cool. I've been covering another film festival that was based up in San Francisco. And because last year they got their festival in like a week before everything got shut down. And so this was the first year they had to do everything virtual. And because they now had to transition to the internet, this was their biggest year ever. Like they finally had a global audience. Um, I don't Mm -hmm. know any numbers, but I know this was a, this was a huge turning point. Do you think you would do, something in tandem where like if you're in Austin, you can come and see these movies in our theater. Otherwise they'll still be available online. Yeah. We did that a couple of years ago. Um, you know, with iron dragon TV, we streamed some of those films, some of the winners from the action festival. Uh, some of those films are still streaming on iron dragon TV. So we, we give a lot of up and coming filmmakers an opportunity, you know, to, uh, stream their content. And, um, you know, being a filmmaker myself, I, I, I think that's a great opportunity for any filmmaker, you know, to mm-hmm. right off the bat, have your content streaming on a major platform. For so sure. yeah, we're always there to help the up and coming filmmaker mm-hmm. and, um, you know, showcase a lot of these new directors, new action directors, new stunt coordinators, mm-hmm. um, because it's constantly changing. You know, there's new talent all the time. And it seems to be evolving uh, for the better, I would even say. Um, oh, let's, let's, let's dig into some Iron, IDTV, Iron Dragon mm-hmm. TV. How did that come about? Like what, uh, and what goes involved into your own app, especially something yeah. as complicated as this one? <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, let me put it that way. I okay. had the idea, you know, I wanted to launch a streaming platform that focused on action and mm-hmm. new content something that you can't find anywhere. You know, I didn't want to have to search on YouTube for all of these new directors or new um, stunt coordinators. Mm -hmm. So I thought, ah, you know, create an app, create a streaming platform where I can put this content. Mm -hmm. So I had to um, find partners and uh, my first partners were Ultraflix and it was a 4K network. But I soon came to realize that people did not want to pay to watch something in 4K. This was early on. Okay. And um, so we parted ways and I decided to launch separately and have something free and just with ads, you know, uh, um, AVOD. Okay. And uh, so I had to find someone to create the app for me. And luckily I was able to find, you know, a great tech team to, to do that. 
So I'm a, I'm the idea person. And then I seek out <laughs> the technical people to help me. I can dig that. There's a, there's a lot of anonymity in stunts. Who is a stunt performer that the general audiences just should be aware of? Like uh, not, not me. Like I, I know some names, but I could always know more names, but like mm-hmm. Robin doesn't go to the cinema. Mm-hmm. Like who, who, who should Robin be aware of? A couple of friends of mine in LA, um, Morgan Bono. He's, mm-hmm. he's fantastic. Uh, such a great talent in LA. Um, who else do we have? David No. I've known David for several years. Um, mm. and he's just um an amazing martial artist. His story is his parents are masters. Mm. They introduced Taekwondo to Australia. And <laughs> so amazing. David is um half Korean, raised mm. in Australia, so he's got the cool Australian accent. Mm. <laughs> and being raised by, you know, two awesome masters i just could not imagine <laughs> to have your mom and dad you know mm-hmm. to train martial arts wouldn't that be cool it would definitely uh, be a conversation starter at parties yeah <laughs> right right so david i think one of his famous scenes he was in the matrix reloaded okay. um He's the guy that's flying in, in one of the scenes and he crashes into a huge white statue in that atrium scene. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's David. And um, yeah, I I know so many cool people, you know, but you put me on the spot. Now I'm like, (laughs) oh, I I didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, no, I'm kidding. I, everyone in the stunt community, I, I appreciate and I love them all. And I appreciate their hard work because it is, it's hard work. Mm-hmm. They make it look easy, but it's hard. Speaking of hard work, you, you got a movie in development or it's just in post-production. It's called Nova. Um, what can right. you tell us about that? Yeah. So Nova is a sci-fi action and I came on board as a stunt coordinator and producer hmm. and, um, yeah, it's, it's a really cool film. I love sci-fi action. Mm-hmm. So my background when I was doing stunts as a stunt woman, mm-hmm. I worked on uh, a Star Wars video game. I worked on mm-hmm. um, a show called Defiance for the sci-fi channel. Okay. So I, I've done a lot of green screen stuff with mm-hmm. stunts and, you know, all that fun stuff. So when I see sci-fi, I, I'm just like a kid. I'm like, yes, I want to work on it. You know, mm-hmm. please let me, whatever I can do. do you, um, you, you do a lot of wire work, if I'm not mistaken. How yeah. how much do you have to get used to like the height difference? I mean, I'm sure sometimes you're only like five feet in the air, but then there are going to be times where you're like 90 feet in the air. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, there's some definite high wires. Um, I've never done any of that that extreme. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it adds a new element, you know, to your, to your work. And, um, I think most stunt professionals know they have to do some sort of wire work now because it's just part of it. You know, the, the stunts have become so intricate. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess we have these new films to thank, but every film has to outdo itself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You have to be well-rounded, which means wire works, you know, pyrotechnics, um, you name it. You have to be well-rounded and know a lot. I think I'd be more comfortable with them setting me on fire than getting me on a wire. Um, really? I have just like wild really? way to go. Yeah, well, uh, the fire stuff is it's controlled goo, right? Like it, yeah. it, it never goes further than the goo and you don't feel right. it. Like I've heard complaints well, that it, at worst it feels cold. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, after a little while, you probably do start to feel some heat, but um, mm. I, I, I know there's a time frame. They don't want to <laughs> yeah. keep it on too long. How great would that exactly. be if you're just on fire during coffee break? <laughs> like, Hey guys, <laughs> Oh, you need a light yeah, there, that- Frank? No problem. Here you go. Here's my arm. <laughs> um, that would be handy to have. I would love that. No, yeah. I have an irrational sense of vertigo. Like I'm, I'm conscious of it in it where, um, once upon a time, I, I took a girlfriend to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. You you know it from the Lost Boys, okay? Mm. Santa Carla. And mm-hmm. uh, they have one of those little people movers there. So you, you just hop in this little pod, and you're just on this on this one wire, and you just go from A to B. That's all it does. Um, mm-hmm. But the contrap... I, I have grown significantly 
larger since I was on it the first time. So when I was a kid, no problem. I was very nice and snug and safe. But now as an adult, like half of my ass is just dangling <laughs> off and I'm just literally holding onto the bar. Um, it's the sweatiest palms I've ever had. Um, and then your brain starts doing this irrational thing where, again, at, at a start point A and ending point B, there's a net, there's a safety net in case like you don't get on the pod and just knocks you off the platform. Like you just fall into this net. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, it's, mm -hmm. you probably get hurt still, but at least you don't hit the ground. Um, yeah. I have to like talk my body out of like trying to slide out of the pod <laughs> and into the safety net. Like, no, the platform's like four feet away. No, just like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the weirdest sensations I've ever had. Cause again, like my brain goes like, yeah, just shut up, stupid. Just sit, sit on, sit on this uh, two by four and you'll be fine. But my body is like just fighting itself. <laughs> anyway, I, I got yeah, us off track awesome. here to embarrass myself. Nova, when can we expect that to be on, on a VOD or in a theater? Well, it's in post-production. So, yeah. um, you know, there's still a ways to go, you know, for the producer, you know, for me, once it's finished, you know, then I have to um, find a distribution company. Hmm. So that's my next step. Um, you know, once we sell it to a distribution company, then we find out if it's going to be on video on demand or in theaters. More than likely, um, it seems like most films now, this type of film is going straight to video on demand. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, there's such a need for content, you know, mm -hmm. so content creators, you know, it's, it's really a good time for filmmakers because all of these platforms are, are fighting, you know, for content. Mm -hmm. I used so to have the hardest good... time with uh, trying to find a distributor. Ultimately I would never find one. I used to do a, a live pro wrestling show and we would record them and we mm -hmm. made uh, six TV shows out of them. Um, mm -hmm. Fun fact, the very first pilot I ever made, uh, regionally, that's in the San Francisco Bay Area, beat the mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys during the Thanksgiving tradition in its half hour block. Now again, wow. that's San Francisco. San Francisco probably don't care too much about Dallas, but yeah. that, that yeah. is a big stat. And I always, I always like to throw that out there. That's impressive. It's yeah. Pretty neat, right? Any, yeah. Anything that beats the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing about that. Like that, that was either something we were going to laugh about or this conversation was going to end immediately. Uh, <laughs> that no, was a test now, you Yeah, no, talking about, um, I do love football. So UT, that's our big, you know, mm -hmm. I love college football. That's mm -hmm. what I really like to watch. Pro football, you know, uh, Dallas Co Cowboys, mm -hmm. I'll watch them, but mm -hmm. yeah. Let me ask I you about college. college football real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked some college events. So like I get you, you, you go to the school and you, you, you got team spirit or you're, you're an alumni and again, your alma mater and, mm -hmm. or there, there's maybe, maybe you just like seeing the future stars of tomorrow's NFL. Like, but, but then there are folks who've never even seen like the lobby shop or the, the student union of the campus. And they're just mm -hmm. like Notre Dame all the way, man. Uh, <laughs> What is the big deal about college football versus the NFL? Like I would say they have a bigger fan base still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, you know what I think it is. Um, college is just so much more exciting. Okay. It's so fast, you know, plays can change so quickly mm -hmm. on a dime. And I think that's what makes it exciting. You know, they could be winning and then fourth quarter going to overtime, you know, things change. Mm -hmm. It, I think that's what I like about college football as opposed to pro pro. It's, I get a little bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's too structured and yeah. Mm. I, yeah. I didn't see the movie or the TV show, but uh, is, is, is the high school football a big thing in your neighborhood as well? Or is uh, that's that another part of Texas? No, every Texas. Yeah. Every Texas. I, I would say every part of Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what? <laughs> Why is high school football such a big deal? Because it definitely isn't up here in San Francisco. Like, and depending on who you are, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. High school, you know, I guess the parents, because a lot of the parents are just, you know, they're huge football fans anyway. Mm -hmm. And then to have your kids play in high wow. school. Yeah. Seems like a lot of pressure to put on a 15 year old. But I agree. 
<laughs> <laughs> but again, that's that's my only experience is like an old MTV movie from the '90s. So don't mm. don't worry about what I think. <laughs> Janelle Smith, I, I, I'm hearing some music. I think it's time for the rock. <laughs> tonight the themes of the theme of the night of my birthday night is kick-ass asian ladies why not why not (laughs) i'm 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 part asian so i can relate to that at least a half Ah. makes sense to me yeah that that, that, that math adds up (laughs) yeah i've been uh taking math lessons from scott steiner and um (laughs) uh so Yes, welcome to the Cameo Party. I go to Cameo.com, and as I said, cool Asian ladies. I made a list of cool Asian ladies from Cameo.com, and I will have uh, Kush go up against our lovely guest, Janelle, to guess the price of each celebrity Cameo. Uh, Try to get as close as you can to the actual price without going over uh, this week's prize is a birthday cake slice made by my dad hey nice. <laughs> <laughs> outstanding so janelle we flipped a coin backstage it came up tails you called tails you'll go first all right so first up we have angela lee pochi now she is a canadian american <laughs> of chinese singaporean and Korean descent. Damn, that's complicated. She's an <laughs> MMA fighter currently competing in uh, one FC. And at 19 years old, she was the youngest person to win a world title in uh, the MMA. And uh, it was in the women's atom weight. So there you go. How much for an cool. Angela Lee uh, cameo? Hmm. Okay. Feel free to ask questions here, Janelle. Yeah, yeah. So where is she based again? So right now she's fighting with uh, One FC, which is uh, a fighting company based out of Singapore. Okay, okay. Right. And she, she, but she's a Canadian nationality. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, I think she has mm-hmm. dual citizenship, Canadian and American. Jealous. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and she's married to, uh, I think, a Brazilian uh, one FC fighter as well. Oh, okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to throw out a number. Is that correct? Yeah, mm-hmm. go throw it out. Is there a range, Robin? I will say, yeah, the average cameo I see is between uh, 20 to about $100, so somewhere within that range. Okay, 85 that's a very strong guess i'm gonna say again there's so many so many so many prefixes in this woman's life uh and she's it's not a very well-known company at least not out here in america maybe it's maybe it's a global sensation in singapore um i'm gonna guess though i feel like i'm overbidding i'm gonna say 45 us dollars okay well, she is charging fifty-five dollars for cameo. So, point oh for Mister. It's not even my birthday. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Janelle, oh, I'm like three and twenty-seven on this, so like this is this is a huge deal for me. <laughs> okay, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Now we have uh, Miss Mei Ling Ng. She is. Uh, let's see. She has a black. Belt in martial arts, a fitness champion of 2013. She is of uh, Chinese, uh, Singaporean, and British descent. Uh, she has recently been in uh, Wonder Woman as the character Orana and will be in the upcoming Suicide Squad sequel, 
the Suicide Squad as the villain Wong Gall. So there you go. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I am going to guess 75. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with this one. Is she in Wonder Woman proper or Wonder Woman 1984? I think the first proper. The, the first one? Oh. Interesting. I can't imagine who she would be, and I don't know the, the, that character's character. name. Was she a stunt woman or just a character? Uh, probably both. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to say a blind $50 because I, don't, I just don't know. He doesn't know. Yeah. And yet... Fifty dollars is what she's charging. Oh what? My oh. God. Oh. Where's the football? I need to spike it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, <clears throat> next up we have uh, Miss Gail Kim. Mm. Uh, she's currently a producer for uh, TNA Impact Wrestling, a seven-time Knockouts Champion of Impact Wrestling, and she's also known for her two stints with the WWE. Um, and <laughs> she's married to the Dinner Impossible host, Robert Irvine, which I just thought was interesting. Really? I thought she was married to Chris Jericho. Wow. <laughs> she, she, she might not be anymore. Crazy. Ooh. So. Okay. I am going to say 50. I think that's... that's I think you might be underbidding there, Janelle. I, uh, really? I'm a big fan of the Gail Kim. I saw mm-hmm. Gail Kim at the Cow Palace in 2005. Wow. Um, she oh. fought Don Marie out of New Jersey. Um, and it was like one of her debuts. She wasn't even on TV. Yet. She was just like, oh, wow, that's that wild Asian chick. Um, <laughs> her first TV debut, she would win the women's championship in WWE, I think. And I think it was the women's championship, not the diva championship. Oh. Um, but then again, uh, TNA, again, she was, the she was the big forerunner to getting a women's division in TNA impact. Um, Gil Kim is a badass round and round. I'm just going to abbreviate that there. And I'm going to say she's probably charging something like 250 bucks. Wow. Well, wow. She's uh she's charged at sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> point for our guest, you know. Okay, well. All right, all right. Well, good for good for her. Yeah. Well, but that's good to know. I didn't know any of that. That's good, you know, informative background. She's that's she's an amazing athlete. Like I, yeah, I, 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 it's one of those things where you're like, oh man, I'm glad I got to see that. The, one of those first or uh, first yeah. incidences, you know. Um, Very. cool. The main That's event good. that 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 event was Brock Lesnar versus the Big Show with Paul Heyman, mm-hmm. and uh, the the thing lasted less than five minutes. It was wild. Um, wow. Many people were angry that night at, in San Francisco at the Cow Palace. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we still have two more. All right. Break okay. it down. Okay. So next we have Bai Ling, uh, known from The Crow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Red Corner with Richard Gere. Uh, she was also apparently in Samurai Cup 2. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Familiar All right. With this lady. I'm going to say 50 again. Finally, <laughs> mm. yeah. has got this weird cult following where, like, she That's doesn't true. do much anymore. Like, I, I, think, yeah. I think she's one of those people that are, are difficult to work with. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. She, she's she's done. Uh, w- w- was she in the Crow or the Crow City of Angels? She was in the uh, in the original. The I believe. Fascinating. Okay. okay. Mm. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go two hundred dollars for Miss Byling. Mm. But I uh, last time I saw her was a, a guest shot on Lost, and that was over a decade ago. Oh wow. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> uh, she's still in charging 50, so uh oh, we're all tied up. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. M. Jeebus. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, it, you know, that, that episode of Lost was weird too, because that was the, that was one of those throwaway episodes where, like, the only thing we got out of that episode was, like, we found out about Jack's tattoo, 
which wasn't Jack's tattoo. It was actually just Matthew's fo- Matthew Fox's weird tattoo. Like he just got some <laughs> Fiji shit just tattooed on his arm. And they're just like, oh, well, I guess we could cover that up or we can make it all mystical in the show. <laughs> and then after the backlash from that episode, they're like, look, guys, maybe we should wrap this up in like three seasons. OK, just give us a finite amount of episodes and we'll wrap this thing up. It'll be go. It'll be OK. I promise. Um, that's my bio story. <laughs> Thank you, bio All yeah. right. Last up uh, from the Great British Bake Off, Kim Joy Hewlett. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I think, first or second runner up. Uh, she's pretty cute. She's cute. She, she looks kind of like me. Mm-hmm. She's mixed Asian and some kind of white and wears big glasses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Ah, uh, let me see. Okay. I'm going to say 60. The British. Great British Bake Off is a, it's, it's a thing. It is a thing. It's, it's, it a, a, thing. it's a thing that's bigger than I would have imagined it being. Yeah. And it's one of those I things love where it. you like I'm, it. Okay. Oh yeah. I love it. I love it. I have show. a couple of friends uh, who also enjoy it and it's, it's at that level where it's it's a British show, so it debuted in England and the UK on, on its regular date, and then it wouldn't come over for like two weeks. But now social media is a thing, so the ending got spoiled for US audiences. And I had to like explain to my friend, I was like, "Hey, man, this is this is what happens when like WWE fans in the UK have to watch a pay per view at two a.m. Okay, like just you got to get over this, man. Okay, the, yeah, it's still the same result. Um, you said sixty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm I'm I wish I could retract that, but no, I'll, I'll stick with it. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go I'm just going to go 100 cuz I, I I don't know this woman, but she's she's got a fan base and they mm-hmm. they would like her. Yeah. Oh. She's only charging $50. Oh, <laughs> M Jesus. We both overbid. Did we both overbid? Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, oh, I oh, have, this is controversial. I, I do have one, but I think I've, I think I've used this person before, but you probably don't remember the price. Um, I definitely I don't, don't remember the price. I don't is. remember the prices, and I put these things together. Uh, mm. We have uh, Tia Carrer. Mm. She's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So, Janelle, what do you think the fantastic Miss Tia Carrer is charging for it? Yeah. 75. That's probably a good bet. That's actually probably really, I'm, you know what? Just, just to make it more controversial, I'm going to say $76 because uh, that, that Wayne's <laughs> world, like she can't escape Wayne's world showdown in little Tokyo. Everyone loves her. Yeah. Um, she's actually got a very good singing. She's got a good mm-hmm. singing talent. She just had no singing career, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Right now, congratulations to our guest Janelle. You won this <gasps> week's party because uh, it's the first charging exactly seventy-five dollars. What? Wow! <laughs> 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 so, uh, the cake is in the mail. All right. <laughs> I, love I love it. I love winning. So. Right. <laughs> All right. Brian Settles, party. Mr. No, before we go, what's what's been your favorite stunt that you've personally done? Oh, um, gosh, let me think. Um, I worked on a video game for Star Wars, and I didn't know it was for Star Wars. Interesting. So I played a stormtrooper in one of their video <laughs> games for Connect, and I say it's my favorite because all I had to do was fall over. <laughs> There you go. All right. That's fair. <laughs> I was a star trooper. Yeah. So all I had to do was like, boom, That's and awesome. that was it. Yeah. And I got paid. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we got a self-defense workshop through the Partners Against Child Trafficking, April 23rd, 
I, I believe uh, admission is $25 for that. Um, the self-defense is actually free and I try to keep those free. Now I do have a wire works, uh, stunt, uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. That one is $25. That's on the 25th. Mm -hmm. Where's that? That is at uh, St. Elmo soundstage in Austin, Texas. So Mm -hmm. my friends at, uh, St. Elmo studio are so kind to open their doors and let me come in and play. (laughs) so that's always fun well janelle i hope you'll come back and you'll you'll talk to us about nova when that's ready to be released uh, and and the film festival in august when we have more information about that um otherwise i encourage everyone to check out iron dragon tv that's on uh, roku google play itunes apple tv and i believe um amazon thank you yes janelle where can people find you on the social medias um, Janelle Smith, my professional page, uh, producer Janelle Smith and, um, yeah, uh, Janelle Vela Smith is my producer page and Instagram, uh, Janelle 001. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Robin Thank Seto, you so you, much. No problem. Thank you for being a part of this. Don't go anywhere just yet. Robin Seto, you do some stuff here. What do you do? Uh, one fun thing I do over here at the Bosna is uh, weekly beer reviews, polite beer expressions, different kind of craft beer every week. Uh, I took this week off because it was my birthday and I'm tired. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's um, fair. April's theme is April Sours. Uh, we did a pretty cool Imperial Sour last uh, last time. Uh, next week, we'll probably do a different kind of sour. So check those out. Uh, those go up on Wednesdays at noon California time because we like to sleep in. <laughs> Folks, I, I, I invite you to wish Miss Robin Seto a happy birthday on her Twitter at Robin underscore Seto. I don't care if it's today. I don't care if it's in August. I don't care if it's Christmas Eve. Wish her a happy birthday. Show some love. You appreciate everything she does. That's for me. I do a bunch of different stuff around here. April 20th, our special 420 episode. You can catch Kush and Kai, episode 54. And we're going to review Cobra Kai season three. Um, spoiler alert, we have a good time. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's different from the first two. It's much different. We also have the Kick-Ass Movie Podcast. That stars myself and director Len Kabazinski. We're going to be talking... Blood Fist 3, Forced to Fight with Don the Dragon Wilson. That's on April 28th. The homie Len Kabazinski needs your help. He's making a movie right now called Pact of Vengeance. It's going to star Leo Fong, John Mickle 4, and from AEW, Diamante. You can catch that on Indiegogo.com. It's at Pact of Vengeance Action Movie. Also, uh, check out his Patreon, Killer Wolf Films. Again, Len Kabazinski needs your help. You got to make a movie. It's going to be a good time. There's a, The campaign is now. Please help out. And then um, Sweet Science Cinema. We released The Great White Hype back on March 31st. Me and Jamil Hempel. We talked The Great White Hype. We had a great time doing it. Next episode coming out in May. For Janelle Smith, I've been Kush Hayes. I've been Robin. You have been you. From the Bosnet family. I think I'd be more comfortable with them setting me on fire than getting me on a wire. Um, really? I have just like wild really? vertigo.